Hello everybody and welcome back. And we're starting off with a brand new adventure, The Night Dark Terror, which is probably one of the most acclaimed, if not the most acclaimed module of all time in Beckme. I really do not want to screw this one up. I don't mind spoilers in the comments. So if you have anything coming up saying this race of people acts like this, or make sure you do this, please do join in. As I've said before, it is twice the length of any normal module. It was copyrighted to 1986, and there were other modules that came out after this that weren't as good. I'm surprised that this wasn't seen as the gold standard that everything should meet. Maybe it was too expensive. There's a good chance that for all its size and for all its incredible content, it didn't turn a profit simply because there was so much work put into it. There are tons of maps and these have been condensed for this little reprint from Drive Through RPG. These apparently were on a massive A2 sheet or else a cardboard DM cover. Not only that, these maps are hand drawn and this is hand drawn calligraphy. Absolutely incredible. Definitely the gold standard. Well, let us begin. And the adventure begins in Kelvin, and we have come from Specularum. Now, Carrick is going to hang around the foreign quarter in Specularum. This is out of reach of the Veiled Society. It is outside the city walls. And there are no demi-humans in the Veiled Society. So when you're surrounded by dwarves and elves and halflings, you're going to be quite sure that, well, you're not going to get stabbed in your sleep. And the reason Carrick wants to hang around for a couple of weeks is because he found a dwarven weapons master. And he, at level 4, is qualified for weapons training. He's been level 4 for some time, but has always sort of been in the wilderness, so this is his chance. He needs to roll a 70% or less to become skilled in a normal sword. Right. Okay. New dice box. This one has deeper sides. Hopefully it will stop dice from bouncing all over the place. And he rolls a 38. Excellent, so that means Tarek is skilled in a normal sword. His thaco drops by 2 to an amazingly low 11. So that 11 comes from 17 for being level 4, minus 2 for his 16 strength to 15, minus 2 for a sword plus 2, which brings it to 13, and a further minus 2 for skilled. Now what does being skilled in a normal sword mean. There's a deflect and disarm. Attacks. Okay, well that's more admin to worry about. I'll have a read up on those later. But his attack dice goes from 1d8 to 1d12. This is unlike the short bow and the warhammer, which went from 1d6 to 1d6 plus 2. He's not going up to 1d8 plus 2. He's going up to 1d12. This is a much underused, ignored dice. So, well, that's one benefit. It'll be nice to use a new dice. 1d8 and 1d12 both average out at 6.5. And the difference is you roll a score between 3 and 10 on this dice and 1 and 12 on this dice. I don't know what you would prefer. I think I would prefer between the 3 and the 10. Because you're always at least guaranteed to do some good damage. You miss out on the 11 and 12. Okay, so Carrick's max damage will be 2 for strength and 2 for his sword. So he will max out at 5 to 16 damage. Wow. Right. Okay. Oh, right. Well, well done. So... Now we're, as I said, are in Specularum. Now the party have gone on to Kelvin and they're quite happy to wait there for two weeks for Carrick to catch up. As much as the city was somewhere different, it proved to be a headache. 
So we're going to wait in Calvin for two weeks. While we're waiting there, we will be given a job by a guy called Stephen. Now let's zoom in on Calvin, which is here. You'll have to ignore this missing stripe. That's where these PDFs had a blind spot. So this is Calvin, and it's described as a logging town. Stephen has a brother called Piotr. Piotr runs a town called Sikiskin and he captures wild horses and sells them on to some Kalari elves. Sylvia is a Kalari elf and Rillafin is the local settlement for these elves. So what the job is, is that we go to Sukiskin by ferry, take these horses, presumably load them onto the ferry and help escort them all the way back to Rifflane. A sort of mercenary hard muscle escort job. The other thing about this adventure is that we have a calendar and these are the 12 months of the year. They vary between 31 and 27 days, summer 29, quite similar to our own calendar. This, we're told, begins in the month of Thaumont, which seems to be the end of winter, the beginning of spring, and specifically the 7th of Thaumont. This is the first time our adventures have been dated. So if you work backwards, we have been traveling through winter for most of our adventures. That isn't how it was played, but oh well. Oh look, and here's another little map. Ah, okay, I get it. This is called a player's handout. So in the middle of the module, there were eight sheets where you could open the staples and pull out a mini booklet for the players. And this would have been their map, which showed Calvin, showed Sue Kiskin, and Rafilian, and Misha's Ferry port, and Threshold. So this is all the players need to know. Now the other thing we're told here is we have weather and moon phases. The amount of detail which has gone into this is incredible. And here we are, Moldean, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, middle of the week, Wednesday, Moldean the 7th of Thamond. And we're told the weather is 1112. And that is, one is light clouds, light showers, cool temperature, and a wind. So that is today's rather temperate, cool, late winter, early spring weather. Presumably two weeks ago would have been... 21 of Vattermont, and that's when we left Carrick for his training. He's been training for two weeks. He's also paid 500 gold pieces for that. I'm going to have to do a lot of admin in this adventure. And you can also see that this map has a hex, which means as we travel, I will have to be using the expert rules. The Night's Dark Terror does describe itself as a basic and expert transition module. So there's a whole new set of wilderness rules to take into account. Okay, well that is the introduction. And we will be taking a ferry towards this Misha's ferry point and eventually to Sukiskin. So we'll see how that goes. What can go wrong? Right. Carrick comes from his successful training and meets everybody in Kelvin. And there he is twirling his swords like a pro. And he arrives on the 5th. And we give him a dev rest because we're not expected to set off until the 7th. And while we're waiting, Sylvia is very excited about this commission because it's a chance to, well, meet up with her own kind of elf. And she tells us that the horses from this part of the world are a pure white breed. And a white horse is the symbol of their people. And therefore, these are very desirable. This should be a good commission. So Carrick arrives and Stephen introduces us to the boatman who will be taking us eastward. And his name is... Kalanos. And we're told that Kalanos is male, aged 40, short, with black receding hair and a heavy brown robe over leather armour. Everybody in this module gets a reasonably good description. They do try to bring everything to life. So we meet and greet Kalanos and head off down the river on the morning of the 7th of Balmont. Let's read. 
At first, the river is flanked by rolling downs on both sides, but a few miles upriver from Kelvin, the forest closes in on the southern bank. The river is narrower here and faster flowing, but the boat makes good progress. Suddenly there is a thud and the boat lurches to a halt, momentarily throwing you off balance. Okay. Now we don't know what the thud is, but the boat has stopped. What it is, is the boat has hit a chain which has been strung from bank to bank just under the waterline. So well, the boat has come to a halt, we're thrown off balance, and all of a sudden shots are fired from the southern bank, the right hand side, and there are eight people that we can see with short bows, and we're told that this is 80 feet away, and we have got eight crew members, nine including Kalanos, and our own little party here. And let's just do random shots at the eight nearest people, which will sadly include the crewmen who are, are rowing. The crewmen are just normal guys who were hired on for this and, well, they may never see their families again. They only have an AC of 9 and 3 HP each, so well, it's probably curtains for them. So we'll do the first one on this crew member. These have short bows. So this is medium range. And their Thaco with the short bow is 18. Okay, they must have a good dex. So, yep, and we have lost a crew member. He is gone. Next crew member survives. Donard gets shot at. And he misses, so that's three, then four. It's a miss, so this crew member survives. Next up we have Sylvia, and she's being shot at by this guy. His back was slightly less, he doesn't have a dex bonus. And he misses. This one here shoots at Liz and hits and does one point of damage off her. This one here shoots at another crew member and hits and kills him. And this final one shoots at Kalanos, our captain, and he misses. Right, that was their surprise round over. Just as soon as that has happened, everybody ducks behind the bulwark. What's it called? On a boat. The sides of the boat. So we duck down behind the sides of the boat, wondering what to do next. And 12 more guys jump into the river. We're told that the boat is 80 feet away, and in their character stats, they swim at 20 feet. So this will take them four turns to get to the boat, then one more turn to board it. So round one proper is that everyone docks, and this we're told gives us complete cover from arrows. And also in round one, these people rush in and make their first 20 feet. So round one is, we'll say it's mutual, it's movement. Right, round two. Movement, they move 40 feet. Right, let's see who gets an initiative. Well, these guys can't get initiative because we're not doing anything. It's up to us to stick our heads up. Um, how would initiative work? Okay, let's roll for initiative and we'll work it out later. Right, we get initiative, that's good. If we had lost initiative, one of our characters poked a head up to shoot. These guys would have shot first. Donor is going to try Slingstone on one of these ones. And actually, he hits and does three damage of number one on the bank. He's down to three. Malin 
is on his knees, but sitting upright, he is going to cast shield. So his AC is 2 against missiles. Carrick is going to try a crossbow. And he hits, and he takes out number 4. Nice one. Sylvia has a longbow plus 1. And, and she hits, and she takes out this one. This is going good. And Liz has a go. And she hits. And remember she does plus two for her training. And she takes out this one. So in that first go we have killed three archers and damaged one. It's their turn. So these guys are in the water. They're 40 feet away. Donard has stuck his head up. And that's a miss. He gets shot at twice. And that's a miss. Carrick gets shot at by this guy. And that is a miss. Sylvia gets shot at by the head honcho. Nope, that's a miss. And Liz gets shot at by the end one. Right, and that is a hit. And that's another three points off Liz. She's down to 15. Okay. Round three. And they get initiative. These guys are now 60 feet towards the boat. And let's do those shots again. Two on Donard. Oh, that's a hit for two. Their Thaco is 18 on the riverbank, so that is a miss. One on Carrick. Misses. The head honcho and Sylvia. Misses. And one on Liz. Misses. Right. And now this crew member here is going to go up and he's going to try and do a backstab on Malin. He is a traitor in our midst. And Malin's AC is 4. This guy's Thaco is 15. So that's an 11 or more. It should be 19, but he gets a plus 4 for a backstab. Oh god, and he does backstab, but a feeble 2 points. So that's Malin down to 9. He has revealed himself. It's our go. Kalanos hasn't done much, but keep cover. So Kalanos, shocked at his own crewmate, is going to move up. Donard is going to switch weapons to try and sort this guy out. So that's there two goes. Uh, Malin has a dagger. Dagger plus two, by the way. That's a 14. His Thaco is 18 because he loses one for his weak strength. Does four points of damage. And that traitor is down to 8 HP. Let's do Carrick shooting on the riverbank. Yes, and he hits and kills another one. This one's down to three. Sylvia hits. She's on the main guy. Takes four points off him. He's down to 14. Liz. Is that a hit? Yes, it is definitely a hit. And she takes three points off him. So there's three points, three points, and 14. Okay. Right, it's round four. And they get initiative again. Right, these guys move up. They are now at the boat. This thief is still trying to attack Malin. He misses, he hits AC6, and Malin is AC is 4. Four archers, one on Donard, misses. One on Malin, misses. The one on Sylvia, misses. And the one on Liz, hits again. Another three points off her. Argo, missiles first. 
Karak hits and does another point off this one. He's down to two. Liz, sorry, Sylvia hits and does five points off this one. He's down to nine. Maybe I forgot her plus one damage last time. Whatever. Sylvia. This is Liz. She hits. She kills this one. Spells. Can you cast sleep at people in the water? Will they fall asleep and drown? Oh, do you know that is so tempting. Melee. Donard is going to try and beat this traitor. And his... Thaco is 13 with melee, so easily hits. He does 1d6 plus 4 damage, that's 9. This onboard trader is dead. And Malin is going to move to the back. So this is round 4. And these 12 guys have got to the edge of the boat. Right, Don orders on melee, so he's prepared for them. Sylvia and Liz and Carrick are still going to try and deal with these three on the riverbank. Carrick misses. Sylvia hits and does four damage to the chief. He is down to five. Liz is on him again. And she misses. Round four. And let's see if they fire back. Do you know I forgot the roll for initiative? Oh well, I'm just too excited. That was one miss. That is another miss. And this Reaver is on Sylvia and he hits her for one point of damage. Right. Now we have round five, and these 12 guys clamber over the edge of the boat. Right, so let's roll for initiative. And they get initiative. Not good. There's going to have to be three on each of us. Let's do missiles first. Oh boy. Donard misses. Second missile on Donard. Hits and does two points off him. Down to 29. The main reaver. Oh my god. Ticks six points off Carrick. That's a miss on Carrick because his buckle is 18. Right, so that's their archery done. Now there is melee and they have daggers. Three on each. Two crewmen, they run to the back. So three daggers on Donard. It's one miss. Two misses. And three misses. It's a miss on Carrick. another miss and that is a hit on Sylvia I think I've oh, never mind. two more on Sylvia <laughs> I'm hit miscounted there and then three more on Liz right that is another hit she's down to 11 and one more on Liz and that is a miss. Okay, that was a good feeble round from then. So this ship now has got 12 bandits on it, each with daggers, and there's still three guys on the shore. It's our turn. So that's round six. Let's roll for initiative. God, my admin has really gone to pot. Right, it's mutual. Let's do archery first. So we've got three archers still on the riverbank. Two on Donard. That one, their Thaco is 18. That's a miss. Donard's AC is zero. That's a miss. One on Carrick. That is another miss because Carrick's AC is minus one. 
this guy's knuckle is 18. Right, so that's our archery turn. Spells, there is only one spell to be had, and that spell is sleep. 11. That is 11 of the lowest AC people in the room asleep, and that could also include the seven crew members. I'll roll a 1d6 to see how many of our own crew members get caught up in that sleep. Four. So that leaves seven bandits asleep. So there are five bandits on board the boat. Donard is going to take a swing at one of them. And he hits. They don't have much in the way of HP. So that is one dead. There are four bandits left on the boat awake and it is round number six. And it's mutual again. Right, let's do missiles. And that's a miss on Donard. That's another miss on Donard. And that's a miss on Carrick. Right, let's do our missiles. We'll do Liz and Sylvia on this main bandit here. We'll do Sylvia. She misses. And Liz misses. Right, so we'll do the melee round. So there are four, four bandits left. That's two on Donard and two on Carrick. And one on Donard hits him for 3 HP, he's down to 26. Two on Carrick. And Earth Daco is 16, so yep, so that's another 4 off Carrick. He's down to 19. Or a melee round, Carrick is going to have to take out his sword and put his crossbow away. Donard. So Donard is going to go for a, another bandit and he kills another one. So there are three bandits left on the boat, three bandits left on the shore. Round number seven. They get initiative. Let's do the three bandits on the shore. For missile, it's a miss. That's a miss. That is a miss. Let's do the three bandits on the boat. That's a miss on Donard. There's two left on Carrick. And both of them miss. So it's our turn. Missiles, Liz, on this reaver. Yes, finally, she kills him. Sylvia. Oh. Magic missile, one of them. Yes, and she kills the one that only had 2 HP left. Melee, Carrick, with his new fancy sword. Misses. His Baco is 11 and they have, well they have AC 9, oh sweet. And he does 12 plus 4 damage, so he does 5 HP off 1. 1 is down to 1 HP. Donard hits and kills another, so there's one left on the boat. Right. Next round, it's us. Liz, take out the one, the archer, that's still here. Yes, she does. She kills him. There's one on the boat. Donard, just take it out. He's only got like one HP left. Yeah, and that's enough to kill him. Oh boy, right. I should have been a bit more careful with my admin there. That was a bit of a nightmare. But nonetheless, most of her party are intact. 
and we're going to use a staff of healing on Liz she's up to 15 and we have seven of the bandits asleep on the boat and we still have our captain and some crew members well we have to slap them to wake them up and there's just five crew members left and two have been shot we have to then go on shore to remove this chain and then we also have to tie up these bandits this is a boat there's plenty of rope okay and we'll do all that next time well that was day one with night's dark terror what day is it again the seventh of Moldane, the seventh of Thalmont, a day that will go down in history. There's another 60 pages of this. Wow, okay, <laughs> right. Uh, I'll see you um, on the other side at Christmas, right.